What's going on, Coyote Pack? Are you ready to meet one of the most bizarre creatures to call Australia home? Let me give you a hint as to what you're about to see. It has no teeth, it has hair, and it also lays eggs. Any guesses? If you don't know what it is, stay tuned, because we're about to enter into its enclosure. No gloves, I'm gonna try to do this without gloves, without getting spiked. Oh, oh, oh super spiky. <laughs> Australia is famously known for its iconic mix of unique animal species, many of which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Some of them, like the kangaroo, are incredibly plentiful, and it's not uncommon in the least to see them quickly hopping across the outback. When it comes to recognizable reptiles, when you think Australia, you definitely think about crocodiles. However, to my surprise, they were actually rarer than you may think as both the freshwater and saltwater varieties inhabit mainly the Northern Territory. But what about the animals that aren't considered icons, the ones who are seldom seen due to their elusive nature, and who in many cases are also considered to be nature's oddities? Today we are back at the Billabong Sanctuary, located in Nome, a small town just south of Townsville in North Queensland. Proudly listed as one of Australia's top ecotourism attractions, this family-owned and operated establishment is home to over 50 native species, including what I consider to be the continent's undisputed champion when it comes to the title of most bizarre. So if you are ready, let's see if we can get up close with the echidna. All right, come on, guys. Uh, the keepers have left the door slightly ajar. Let's go inside and be extra quiet and see if we can find it. Oh, it's right here. Come in, come in, come in. You have to be careful where you step when you're in this enclosure, because look at that. Almost like a biological landmine. You may think that this is some sort of cacti, but that is in fact an echidna. That's an animal? That's an animal, and it is buried down in the dirt. If you guys want to see it, I've got to dig it up. And that's, that's about it. It kind of looks like a sea urchin, right? That's it? So that's it. It's just a ball of spikes? A ball of spikes. Looks like porcupine quills. Um, and it's not something you want to come in and sit down and have a picnic on. So you're just going to sit right here next to it. Oh, now it's really starting to move. Hey, buddy. How you doing in there? Now, actually, it's a lot bigger than that. It is buried down in the dirt. And what we're seeing right here is an incredible defensive pose. Now, this creature is incredibly speedy when it comes to digging. And all it needs to do is sense something dangerous in its environment, like a dingo, and they will immediately use their claws and their powerful legs to dig down into a little burrow like that and wreck these spines up in the air. And it's very tough to eat something that is covered in spines like that. But so the, are the, will those come off into your fingers? No, its quills do not release from its body like that of a porcupine. In fact, they're not related to porcupines at all. And I know you guys really want to see this creature. And to do that, I'm going to have to dig it up and no gloves. I'm gonna try to do this without gloves, without getting spiked. Now, these spikes are non-venomous, but if I'm spiked by them, it is gonna cause some irritation and it's gonna be very itchy. Are so they gonna, sharp? They're razor sharp. Here, bring your hand in here and just kind of prop down on top there. It's like a pin cushion, right? Ah! Yeah, Ooh, and like every time you touch it, it moves. And even that, imagine if you were a dingo and you come into the environment to sniff this, even that little movement can give you a good poke right in the nose. Yeah, you can feel they kind of lay down, and when it budges, they get like mm -hmm. really stiff. Yep, they can lay flat, and then they can also be erect like that to protect the creature when it's buried down wow. underneath soft soil. Sure, you want to do this? Well, yeah, you guys want to see it up close, right? Sure, All I right. want to see it, but only if you're willing. Oh yeah. Well, let me see. My tactic here is going to be to try to get to its underside. Now their bellies are much softer than the top side. So if I can get my hand sort of underneath it, I can pull it out and what it's going to do is curl up into a ball. Here we go. Oh, I got it, I got it. Oh, here comes the face. Is that his head right there? No, that's the rump end. Oh wow, it is incredibly strong. Here we go. I got you, I got you. Got it. There it is. That's an echidna right there. Oh, 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 super spiky. Can you see its face on that side? Yeah. There's a little face right there. Oh my gosh. 
sit down here. I'm gonna plop it on my lap. This is a dangerous little maneuver, but I want to hold it like this. Wow, look at the spikes sticking out. That looks just like a sea urchin. Hold on, I gotta get by the belly. Ow, 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 ow. Or actually, you know what, Coyote? Yeah. You know what that animal reminds me of? What's that? Remember that video game we used to play? My favorite video game? Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. And actually, what's really cool about the echidna is that the echidna was a character in the Sonic series. If you guys remember Knuckles, the red one, he had those boxing gloves. He was actually an echidna based off of this animal. And look at that cute little face. You see that elongated nose? That is specialized for catching insects. Now they're insectivores, which means they primarily feed on bugs and they specialize in eating ants and termites. And similar to an anteater, they don't have teeth, but they have a long sticky tongue. They use that tongue to kind of feel around inside of old rotting logs underneath rocks and around in termite and ant nests. What they will do is just kind of suck those creatures up into their mouths and grind them up against the roof of their mouth. And then they have a meal. Hi, bud. Oh, you're so cute and dirty. Look at that little foot. Look at those paw pads. And they feel just like latex. And look at that big claw up front. It's like a shovel. And it's interesting how the front legs look very similar to the back legs, because these are the little back legs here. See how stout they are? Little chubby feet. Yeah, and the little pads feel like latex. And the front feet, you actually can't see the front feet really well, but they kind of look like the foot of a mole. It's interesting, this animal is like the combination of so many different creatures. And I find that that seems to be the case with many of the animals here in Australia. They're like this weird mix of all these different creatures that we're used to seeing in the United States. What does the echidna smell like? Oh, I'm not sure I want to get mine. Oh, musky, a little musky. I don't know if they secrete any sort of musk or if that's just from the dirt that it's been burying around in. Now, do they yeah. shed their quills? Uh, yes, they can shed their quills just like hair, and they do actually have hair, little coarse bristly hairs in between all of these spines, and their skin is incredibly leathery. Now, other than the platypus, this is the only mammal that lays eggs, and the female will actually carry the egg inside of her for several months, and then when she lays it, it takes about 10 days for it to hatch. So bizarre, a mammal that lays eggs. Now, how many eggs do they lay at once? Just a single egg. That's it. One egg is all this animal will lay. Let me see if I kind of set it down for a second, if it'll start to walk. Here we go, watch this. You guys want to see it dig into the ground? Sure. Watch how fast it's able to burrow down, watch this. Any sort of disturbance in the environment, look at that, they actually push the dirt out to the sides. And those stout little legs and claws allow them to do that. So they don't necessarily dig down forward to protect themselves, they dig straight down so that then they can create that pincushion defense pose. And they have incredible camouflage too. I mean, any sort of environment that's made of sticks and leaves and dirt, and this thing is gonna blend in perfectly. Now look at that, it's already buried back down. All right, let me see if I can get him back up here. I'm surprised you put it back down after it took you so long to dig it up. Yeah, I didn't really think about that. Okay, they are so, like, this is me trying to lift the echidna out from under the ground, and it is locked in place. Now you can imagine if it nestled itself up against a log or in between some rocks, it'd be absolutely impossible for a predator to dislodge it. All right, let's see if we can bring the echidna back up from under the dirt. Come here, buddy. Oh, it was so strong. Dangerous game of operation there. Whoa. There's his face. Get dirt off. There's a little nose. Hi, bud. Pretty cool, huh? That's really cool. You want to, uh, you want to pet its back? I kind of want to try to hold it. You want to try to hold it? Do you think that's okay? Uh, yeah. You just got to get it from from underneath here. Here, okay. go ahead and set down your camera real here, quick. Man. All right. Just be really, really gentle. I was told if I keep my hands flat. Yeah, actually, if you if you put your hands flat, I can kind of lay it oh. on you like that, and then kind of feel for the belly. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's got me. Got it. Spiky, right? Oh, it's super spiky. I got you. I got you, buddy. Pretty cool, Hi. huh? Hi. That's pretty cool. Now, what most people probably don't know is that Knuckles was your favorite Sonic Patchogue character, he right? He was. The underside is is really soft and right. fur coated. Yep. You would never think that by looking at the top. Well, you can have a really soft underbelly, I guess, if you have back hair and spines like this ah, guy. It's got me. Right. Can I just sit down <laughs> on my knee? He's, he's got me. Hold on. Got it? Yeah, I got him. They have a strong grip. Yeah, they really do. Quite now, the those, handshake. <laughs> those little stubby feet really can grab onto you. It's really warmed up. Yeah. At this point, I feel like we're pretty comfortable together. I'm not getting spine too bad. I'm just hanging out. 
You know, I found out what that uh, kid in his name is. You want to know? Yeah, what's his name? Spike. Spike. <laughs> That's uh, a good original name for an echidna like this. Well, this was pretty cool, getting up close with one of the only monotremes that's here in Australia, the echidna. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, set him back down into the dirt and he's going to disappear. You ready? And there he goes. Oh, he got me good. Echidnas truly rank as being one of the planet's most uniquely bizarre animals. And while their spike-covered bodies may give them an outwardly aggressive-looking appearance, these ambling little monotremes are as kind-hearted as it gets. If you ever encounter one of these egg-laying mammals in the wild, do not attempt to pick it up. Trust me when I say, you will regret those spines. However, if you simply admire it from a respectful distance, I promise that an encounter with an echidna is something you will never forget. Hey Coyote Pack, I have some exciting news. I'm proud to announce that the crew and I will be back on tour in 2018 with Brave Wilderness Live, visiting cities all across North America. Our first shows are in Anaheim and San Diego, California. From there we head to Phoenix, Arizona. Beyond that, we will be visiting San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Boulder, Colorado, with many more shows to be announced in the coming months. Tickets can be purchased at the Brave Wilderness website, so make sure to reserve your seats today. And don't forget, subscribe, so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave! Yeah!